Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Exponential Potential. And goodness me, what a powerful month, Jen. Have you felt this month in terms of content? Yes, I've been listening back to a couple of the episodes and all yeah, they it they it has been the energy behind it has been so powerful and I really I truly hope that we've assisted our listeners and um, what, you know, our YouTubers in giving them some really good tools that they can incorporate into their days to help them create that harmony and balance and joy um, and take them, you know, to really elevate and enhance their lives and their businesses and their careers. Mm. Um, yeah, and, I, there's definitely yeah. been an energetic shift. Yeah, and if you're new to the channel or if, um, if this is the first one this month you've caught up, this month we've been examining unlocking divine feminine power and exploring many different aspects of that, whether it be from embodying goddesses and assigning virtual mentors um, or communicating from source with the little s and the big s, as well as the divine power that's around us all of the time that we can access from Mother Earth. Um, so it's it's just, I felt some really strong shift. Um, and I'm sure that today's going to bring even more. <laughs> so, so today we are uh, picking as radiant women, empowered. You know, how we can navigate life's journey through the power of intuition. And looking really at assets of intuition, what it means, how you can tap into it. And Jen, you're going to be leading us today. Um, for those of you who don't know that don't know Jen, why not? Um, so Jen <laughs> is a certain luminary of transformational expertise. Um, she guides women who want success in business and to live life with balance, freedom, and joy. And you know, very often you work with clients, uh, taking them from a place of feeling overwhelmed and stuck to embracing their inner power. Uh, helping to fly forward with that clarity and that confidence that makes all the difference, helping them to live a life they love. Uh, Jen is a freedom seeker, a lover of life, an activator of play and possibility, and that just shines through <laughs> as well as her role as a best-selling author, podcast host, <laughs> transformation coach retreat leader and reiki master um so jen you know we, we're absolutely spoiled rotten um in terms of the expertise that you bring to the table and i am excited to get into this topic yes yeah thank you for that lovely that very powerful introduction and uh as you're reading through it 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 kind of reminds me of the journey that i've been through because this has been a sort of a over a decade actually two twenty two decades of of my own personal journey and then over a decade of helping other other women in their journeys to really create a life they love and it just brings me so much joy um knowing that I have that impact on other on others so yes and yeah today's topic is Another juicy topic, and I think it's really important, all about tapping into our intuition and, and learning to trust it, learning to exercise it, and um, learning to make really good, wise choices from following mm. that intuition. Mm. And so often in my world, uh, in terms of leadership and strategy, uh, intuition gets sidelined because it's not, you know, you can't put it on a spreadsheet, you can't score it, <laughs> you can't put it on a matrix or a two by two matrix. And um, so intuition is very often seen as a, a soft, non-scientific hunch, gets belittled as a hunch. So I'm excited about really unpacking that because when I look at great leaders, I can see that they do tap into that intuition, um, whether that be leaders in a corporate sense or a business sense or or leaders within the community or in families. They really are in touch with that inner guidance. So yeah. let's let's dive on in. Um, let's start by breaking down really 
you know, what is intuition? And then how does it how does it get such a bad reputation? How does it differ from logical thinking? Yeah, and I, what you say actually a bad reputation. Um, when I think back about the people that sort of poo poo it, um, and not anything against ma- males, we don't male bash here, um, but it comes mostly from that let's say masculine energy not males let's say masculine energy when somebody poo poos it you know they're usually a very logical mindset and they don't understand or can't see how the intuition that's really fluffy can actually have a big impact on the decisions that you make in your life um but we're we're a vessel and we're a vessel of we, we are a sensory vessel and we pick up on energies around us. We have within us natural instincts that have been practiced from previous generations, from our ancestry line. We have access to universal energy. We have access to the energy of nature. So we have all these sensory information that's coming through us all the time. And if we think about, you know, if you think about it logically, you look at an animal and their natural instincts. That's part of your intuition. That's part of their intuition. It's innate within them. And it's innate within us as well. It's one of those innate abilities that every single one of us has that we can strengthen and enhance and develop. So what it actually is, it's kind of an inner knowing that that goes beyond any kind of logical reasoning. Um, It's instinctual, as I said, and it can really help us, it really help guide our decision-making to create not good or bad choices, but better choices, choices that are in alignment with what we want to create. Um, And it comes from a, there's different types of intuition as well. So, you know, when you say it's really difficult to, to define, it's not tangible. Excuse me, I just need to cough. Sorry about that. <laughs> Little pause in the in the flow so intuition there's different ways um so it's an it comes to people through different senses um so claire if you think about your intuition while i'm talking have a think about your intuition and see where that comes from from you but it is a sensory feeling um so if it's a deep sense of knowing there's a deep sense of knowing it's like you just know you know, you know. Um, if it's, it could be visual. So clairvoyancy, for example, is visual. Um, and that comes from, it doesn't come from a an outside vision. It comes from a vision in your mind's eye, your, your third eye it comes from. Uh, sensory, your auditory sensories. For some people, it can come like a loud, they can actually hear something within their mind so it's not an external voice it's an internal voice that's very loud and you and can be very clear um there's a feeling i i i um for me for example i'm clairsentient so that's feeling Mm -hmm. and when i'm working with clients whether that's in person or distance and this i mean this blew my mind and i really didn't believe it for the longest time Um, I would actually feel their pain in my body or I would feel their emotion in my body. And it took me a while to understand what was happening um, and then to use that in healing sessions. So if someone had a migraine, I I literally got a migraine, excuse me, a migraine. Um, I used to go to a a, um, development circle, a psychic development circle. And I would feel the people in the room and I would say, oh, 
you have um, a pain in your right or left knee. And then I would get something to say, okay, you probably need to cut out your sugar. And that would just come to me and I would physically feel it in my body. Um, I also have a lot of visual things going on as well. So the more you practice, um, and we'll talk about that in a bit, the more obvious it becomes to you, but it's nothing to be frightened of. These are, this is just sensory energy in coming through you as information to help you make better choices. Um, Mm. And you asked how it comes through for me it's, yes. it's around the co- their cognizance so it's a it's a it's a knowing um yes. and also uh kind of when when you're at the beginning of realizing um it's when you're in the flow of a conversation and you can almost finish the next person's sentence or you you start to, you just you kind of go really quite deep quite fast um because you're getting to the nub of the issue or you're asking them a question that you know you couldn't really know without the that deep research but you just it's just seems it's it's weird because at times you think oh it's just obvious isn't it and you don't realize that actually the reason why it's obvious is that um you know your intuition is part of who you've been since you've been born and and of course it's obvious to you because you've known no different (laughs) yes yeah and and a lot of the time you think that's a really good point about it's obvious because it is obvious to you because you have such a strong sense of inner knowing, but it's not obvious to everybody around you. And I'm sure you have the same, but when I'm talking to clients um, about something and they're they're telling me that there's an issue, there's a problem that keeps coming up for them. And I get straight to the core of the, the, the cause of it. Um, if I, I first of all guide them towards it and if they can't see it then we talk about that a bit more but I already have that information come to me so strongly and that is a sense of knowing I don't hear it but it is a yeah it's that sense of knowing and I just I, and I've just pinpoint it and they say so you know my clients say so many times you've totally n- hit the nail on the head that's exactly what it is mm-hmm. and it you know it I when I do that, I do it because it gives them a sense of release and a sense of relief. And then we can work on, okay, well, why is that happening? And let's move forward and let's transform that. But yeah, yeah. I think I think a lot of people have that cognitive, claircognitive, claircognitivity, um, but don't realise it. Mm. Um, and, mm. and when you mention that kind of everybody has some element of it I mean we're describing um a sensitivity to energy to emotion to non-verbal cues that go on all of the time and and kind of how a lot of that amasses and is interpreted um almost almost instantly so many people would relate to being able to feel the energy in the room yeah and again kind of that's that is part of intuition it means that you are drawing that information in it's it's there you and and I think that's that's a way to start to break down um some of the taboo or some of the negativity to say we're all intuitive to some extent absolutely and and talking of when you feel other people's emotions um empathy so that's being an empath and a lot of empaths get very worn down and and suffer actually quite a lot with anxiety and depression um, because they don't know necessarily that that's not all their stuff. So there's ways that you can protect yourself as well. Um, and I'll just quickly, I just want to give that a little gift to our listeners that are empath, empaths that feel emotion from other people because there's so many of us. And as the energies are shifting on our planet there's more of us and it's becoming more acceptable and there are also science is also proving that these energies exist that we give off energy that we receive energy um if anyone's really interested in the science behind it and the neuroscience behind it there's some amazing neuroscientists one of them being one of my favorites dr joe dispenza Um, But going back to the empath, you can protect yourself by setting 
an intention, a really powerful intention, and visualizing yourself in a bubble. And you can physically, if you want to, to make it even stronger, physically draw a bubble around you and then visualize and feel into your heart and visualize yourself filling that bubble with love. So if anything comes to you, that any negativity, any negative and heavy emotions come to you, it just transforms it into love and light. So you're not sending it back to people because that's not that's not what we're about. We don't want to send it back. We want to transform it into love and light. And I used to use this before I um, had the tools and don't need to do it anymore. But I used to use it when I was standing in the in a in the supermarket uh, queue. The post office I used to find really, really heavy standing in that queue of the post office. So I would just go in and I'd protect myself. It's a really helpful tool and it, and it, it truly, it works. It really, I know it sounds like, what? Bonkers. It works in cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's the difference. Yes. Yeah, you've got to get yourself in a, in a place of peace. Um, but for empaths that are holding and and carrying other people's emotions because they feel it they feel that energy um it's a really lovely tool to use and just send love out to everybody around you it's very simple but it i honest to god it worked for me it works for my clients so, so it's about in... so sorry go on claire let's <laughs> <laughs> say kind of in terms of intuition then you know how do you how do you enhance and develop your intuitive senses you know you've mentioned the empath mm. element but but what what do you do to develop your in, intuition so first of all um awareness so and and the other thing that your body just going back to another thing it's it's also your body tells you so many things the way your body feels um so it's about creating awareness and noticing those feelings and sensations. So that's the first step. Um, you know, if, for example, if something, if something makes you feel knotted in your stomach or heavy in your heart or your pulse or starts racing, that's your body is telling you certain things um and it could be that it and we touched on this in the episode about embracing your divine feminine power um it's difficult sometimes to know what's coming from a place of fear and what's coming from your guidance yeah and uh, most of us need help with that to especially in the beginning to start understanding and determining what's the difference um so and I help my clients do that but what you want to do is start noticing the sensations and journaling is really beneficial you know and asking yourself you you already have all the answers available to you you just might need help to uncover and explore those tells those signs those what you know when am I following my intuition when am I when am I allowing my fear or my ego to take me in another direction? So that is a skill that needs some, some a lot of people need help with that. But some of the things that you can do to enhance your intuition and your senses want to start noticing things and journaling. So the more evidence that you have the more you'll start trusting. And the more you start trusting, the more your intuition will develop. Um, I'm going back to those um, lab tests in school in terms of observations. You know, and essentially that's what you're describing is, is observing, mm -hmm. noticing and recording and yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. You're, you're creating a journal of evidence. So some of the things you need to get yourself in a, place of receiving we've talked a lot about receiving um and the divine embrace your divine feminine power and also in your episode as well in unleashing your inner goddess 
and Thea May's amazing interview that we did about connecting to source, your little source and your big source. So all of these episodes are all so well, it's so intertwined with each other. So I highly recommend you listen to all of them this month. So first of all, you need peace. You need quiet. You need space in your mind because you can't hear or feel anything when you're so busy, physically busy, juggling everything, or when your mind's so busy. And I know most episodes I say this, but it is key. Creating space is key if you want to live a life that's in alignment, that's full of flow and ease and joy and harmony. And it is essential. You can't it is absolutely essential to create that space and quiet in your mind to be able to feel, notice, hear your intuition. So peace and quiet, absolutely space. Um, going out in nature, we talk about a lot because nature is that natural equilibrium of perfection and harmony. And to ground yourself in nature, to be around that peace and harmony will help create a lovely sense of inner peace and calm. Meditation, of course, um, you could do guided meditations. You can do, you can listen to um, binaural beats um, and different types of music to help you get in your zone. You can get creative whether that's doodling, you know, from doodling to creating some kind of masterpiece, whether that's creating music, you know, they're all areas that you can start to enhance your intuition. And Reiki, actually doing Reiki, either become, start, you know, taking Reiki as a level one or having Reiki sessions or some kind of energy healing work sound baths which I love so that's singing bowls and gongs and all sorts of incredible things um, and they're all over the place now sound baths mm. and gong baths they are such a beautiful way of meditation and just go, going into that zone of re deep deep relaxation and quietening the mind um, and and one of my favorites that I used to do a lot is oracle cards. Not tarot. I have done tarot, but I I prefer oracle because they are very, very positive. Um, and they've always got a lovely message, a really positive message. And it just helps you start to tap into yourself and, and the energies that are out there and, and, Again, whenever I do these, they're always spot on for my clients. They always can totally, they just totally resonate with, with what a card's saying. And it just sort of confirms. And it's the same with tarot, a decent tarot card reader. They're great for confirmation when you're confused. Um, but make sure it's a reputable reader. Um, and also going to sort of a psychic development group or a meditation group yoga is another way you can connect with your intuition because it's again it's quieting down that mind and allowing you to open up to receive so claire would you like to choose an oracle card these yes, yes. okay <laughs> excuse me i don't think you can see the title there mm -hmm. No, oh, they okay. do beautiful so, though. They are. They call it's called the Secret Language of Light by Denise Jarvi. And she's got some beautiful cards. This, this is just one of her sets. Um we'll put the link actually in the in the description. So but they're beautiful, they're very um light, and they've got in fact they're a bit similar to the colours that we've got, but softer. Um, you can't, because they're so pale, you can't actually see them. So, mm. hang on, I've got just a moment. So, if I just take one from the top and you tell me when to stop, Claire. Okay. Think of a question. 
that you want some clarity on. Stop. For this top one? Oh, and you just put the down. one I just put down. Okay. Aha, the one I put down. So, oops, hang on. There we go. It's called Insight. And for those that aren't watching, because I'm showing it to the camera right now, it's a, a person, a female, with her legs crossed in the yoga in a sort of yoga position, and she has light and codes coming down from the cosmos and out expanding out to her from her body. That's actually one of the meditations that I do a lot, like a an audio activation of pulling in the light. So this is what I was talking about about when you, if you're an empath, sending that love and light out from your body and expanding outwards so and it's a dark navy blue with pinks and purples um and it is it's beautiful i'm not sure that i don't think we can include it as an image on the this lovely one though yeah mm. yeah so insight interesting we're talking about intuition today <laughs> <laughs> so i'll just have a little look what it says about insight I'm not going to read all of it because it's quite wordy, some of these. Here we go. So it's, oh, look. So this is what, this is not a, this was not planned, I promise you. But this is what I'm saying about these cards being totally on point. And it says, refine your psychic senses. <laughs> and we're talking <laughs> About enhancing your intuition that was the exact question that was just asked <laughs> like I <laughs> I just get blown away by this stuff I really really do um so it says you you are or about to see further higher and deeper through space and time your psychic skills are expanding and seeing through the lens of your soul hone your abilities by reading about or doing a workshop in on intuitive development we are we are all psychic it's part of who we are but we have thrust this ability into the background in favor of other senses problems occur when we keep looking at the manifested world for proof of our worth you are worthy because you are here there is nothing to prove you could become an intuitive reader if this is something you desire um, it could also mean you are learning to trust what you feel and the next steps to take will drop into your mind in the following days. So this is for everybody, this card, because we're talking about intuition. And then there's there's a meditation in here, um, re inspired reflections and actions and journal work. So... And actually, this just reminds me, when your phone rings before you look at the caller, bring a name into your mind and see if they match. How often are you thinking about someone and they phone you? Yep. Yeah. It happens all the time. Um, I'll send you that information. And um, this is, as I say, these Oracle cards, I've got many, many packs. But these Secret Language of Light, I have to say, are one of my favourites. Yeah. Uh, so, Honestly, we haven't rehearsed that, and Jen doesn't know the question that I've asked either, which is why I'm giggling away because I'm <laughs> like, okay, okay, okay. So your question right. around was around if you go deeper into your intuition, it will bring you the answer. Yeah, yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's there brilliant. Go. Yes, <laughs> that is uh, that's brilliant. Um, I'd love to know if you liked that. Our, to our audience if that's something you would like as a, a feature every so often I think I quite like to yeah. do that every so often not every episode but every so often pull a card um so by doing those and heart you know taking doing those exercises and journaling and noticing you will start strengthening your intuition it's like giving your sixth sense um, a little workout and it's like a muscle the more you the more you you the more you do the more it will strengthen 
Um, so by journaling about your experiences of when you followed your intuition, what happened, or when you didn't follow your intuition, what happened? So the more, and as I say, the more you do that, the more you follow it, the more you'll receive. Mm -hmm. And it's that really, brings, yeah, it is a really powerful tool. And that brings the question of trust really. And, you know, the importance of trusting your instincts and you touched on on it before but how do you how do you differentiate between those kind of little anxiety feelings or fear-based responses or you know we've talked a lot about ego and kind of that being an automatic response how do you how do you differentiate between those aspects and what's a you know genuine a true intuitive nudge um one thing to notice is synchronicities so if things start lining up and they're easy and they lift you and they energize you and they pique your interest that's intuitive that's you being guided forward and you just start following the breadcrumbs as it were you just take the next steps and then the next step and the next step. Now, there are elements where fear comes into that, because as we elevate our lives or our business or our career, or we come out of a different, you know, we're, we're in a very comfortable zone right now. But every time you take a leap or a step forward and you elevate your life, then your ego will start to play and come in because it wants to keep you safe. So you will feel uncomfortable a lot of the time, even though it's energizing you and piquing your interest, there will be some underlying fear factor going on <clears throat> where you might create anxiety. It will, you know, overwhelm is a good sign that you're stepping out of your comfort zone and you're evolving and growing and elevating and taking yourself to the next level because the reason why we overwhelm happens is because we're not sure of the unknown. We're not sure of what the next steps to take are necessarily. We're not sure of what the outcome's going to be, and it can be scary. So overwhelm is actually a good sign, and fear is a good sign. When we have uh, so a lot of the time, and I... It takes it, as I said before, it takes practice and it takes, you know, if you're noticing and journaling, that will help you determine the difference between am I following my intuition or am I following something that's not going to serve me as well? And we mentioned in the Embrace Your Divine Feminine Power, we mentioned, we did touch on this in terms of the anxiety um, anxiety will come up when we feel that we're not safe and we don't feel we're safe when we're stepping into something new because it is the unknown so it's about coming from that place of curiosity which both myself and Claire do a lot and looking at it as an adventure and just follow the steps follow the next natural step and when it starts becoming really difficult um it's usually a sign either you're not in alignment with it, it's not the right time, there's some things that need to be learned first, or you're being redirected. So I'll repeat that again. When things become a struggle, you're not in the right, you're not in alignment um, from a headspace point of view. You're making it you're making it hard for yourself because you're fearing success. You're fearing debt. You know, you're self doubting. You're second guessing yourself. So that's one. You're in your head. Two, it's not the right time. Three, there's some skills um, or uh, some connections that need to be made first. Or four, you're being redirected. And sometimes you don't know that until you step forward and take the next step. 
Does that does that make sense? Yeah. So it's about collecting that evidence again and tapping in and asking you just ask that question is this the right thing for me right now is this the right direction to go um one of my favorite things to ask is um and this comes from jennifer huff it's her favorite thing to ask show me show me what i need to do in this moment so instead of looking too far ahead of yourself bring it right back to the present and say, show me, what, what's my next step? What do I need to do in this moment? And you'll you'll be drawn to it. And if you can't hear it because you're too busy, your head's too busy, you're too feeling too anxious or feeling the fear, that's when you need to create that space and go for a walk or meditate, do some deep breathing, take a nap, and, and just let go of the answer of trying to get the answer because when we start trying too hard and we're holding on to something too too tightly we don't leave room for the answer to come so for many of our listeners kind of the you know, the proof is in the pudding that they kind of want to show and see and you know pay attention um where can you apply intuition in different aspects of your life? Where would you encourage you know, our listeners to, to go next? Well, you can, you can use your intuition to make daily decisions. It can be in your relationships. It can be in your career. It can be in your business. It can be what holiday you take. It could be what are you going to do um, it could be around a conversation. It could be around a project, an idea that you've had. Um, so when you're making any kind of decision, it's always good. And that Thea May actually talked a lot about this through communication. Um, but it's you know not just a not just in communication, but when any you when any you whenever you're making any kind of decision, you want to create that space. And you maybe want to write, depends on who you are as a person, but it's some, it, I like writing the question down if it's a big question and there's lots of elements to it, if it's a complex question. Um, so you just create that space and you ask yourself the question and you, you tune in by creating that peace and quiet, by meditating, going in nature, um, having a bath, you know, whatever it might be it might or even talking it through with somebody but it create that space because sometimes it's hard to find the answer yourself you need some guidance to guide you through that and see what see what comes to you see what comes to your sort of whether it's a feeling whether it's a knowing whether it's a an idea or a solution it may come to you in the form of a conversation with someone it may come to you in the form of meeting somebody yeah. but just yeah. create the space around it and sometimes we don't always get the answer straight away um we some you know sometimes it we need to really give more space sometimes the answers can come to you within a few minutes sometimes it could be a couple of days yeah so it can come to you at different times and it can come to you in different ways. No, it's just, I think just the, the, the topic itself is, is so yummy. It, it, it's so empowering in that everybody has access to it. Everybody has access to that guidance and naturally your intuition will lead you towards alignment with you know, your true goals and, and where you're going um kind of some of the whispers are whispers to pay attention mm -hmm. <laughs> pay attention um but this is just a, a really fascinating topic and it I think it's one um that 
you know, as a human species, we need to understand and, and develop and um in in terms of like big movements like Mind Valley, they've been talking about well intuition should be taught at school. Mm. Yeah, actually kind yes. of, we need to we need to start um unlocking this earlier or at least getting rid of the negativity that's around intuition. Yes. And actually that's interesting. There's just two more things I want to say. One about the, about children. They already are very aware. They already are so tuned into their intuition um, and it's just flattened out of them most of the time. I have a friend with a really, um, with a daughter and sh- her, she's a great parent because she really encourages um, her daughter to express that because her daughter sees things and feels things and her, her mum just encourages her all the way. Um, and so often it's squashed. Um, I don't know whether I used to have an imaginary friend. Was it imaginary? Was it real? You know, and that even that, you know, is squashed. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Who are you talking to? And I used to see a lot of light. I still do, but a lot of orbs and things. And, you know, I remember being told, oh, don't be ridiculous. There's nothing there. So it's as a parent, what you can do is start encouraging your child to express that and not poo poo it and allow them to have that um, and develop it. And the other thing I wanted to say is the one thing that I didn't talk about was actually our vibration. We talked about alignment, but also the more that we are coming from a place of joy and we are feeling those elevated emotions, gratitude, joy, uh, love, compassion, kindness, when we're in those zones, that's also when we're in the receiving mode as well. We won't receive our intuition um, information when we're coming from a place of fear, hate, um, protection. When we're putting up barriers, it's when we're in a place of love, kindness, compassion, joy, gratitude, service, contribution. That's when we are in that, that place of receiving. Oh, Jen, this, it, this, we could talk for hours on this, <laughs> for sure. Um, and there ways you mentioned a few times that you you do help uh, some of your clients to understand and grow their intuition. Are there ways that um, people can reach out to you and explore this in more detail? Yes, yeah, they can reach me through my website. Um, my email address is on there. My WhatsApp information is on there. Um, so, you know, if it's something you want to do, if they want to enhance and elevate your life, if you want to create more joy, harmony and balance, um, if you want to create that sustainable success, fulfilling success, um, reach out to me via email or WhatsApp and, um, we can arrange a free consultation. So listeners, I hope that you've enjoyed, uh, diving into this topic of intuition there's a lot within here um that will help and support you on your way and i'd love to hear the way your intuition has yeah has had an impact already or how you're experimenting and playing with the concepts uh, i encourage you again to listen into this month's topics especially around unlocking d- divine feminine power there are some really really deep and juicy Um, episodes within there we've been touching on um, throughout the conversation today Um, yes and oh just sorry I forgot to mention there is I do have a free gift for you um Mm. of course (laughs) we always forget to talk about our free gifts (laughs) a gift it's it's free and it's a gift of course it's a of course it's free if it's a gift (laughs) um so I have a lovely gift which will help you get into that place of receiving Um, and help you release some of that overwhelm and help you start your your day every day with gratitude in your heart, with joy, with inspiration, um, with intention. And when you're in that place, it helps you be productive, effective, and it opens you up for receiving and getting you into alignment for the success and life you want to create. 
gorgeous gorgeous so follow the links that's yes yeah that's been hugely powerful um as ever please like love subscribe share comment you know whatever 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 let us know that you're there let us know how this is landing for you um it's an absolute joy to give and to share from our perspective but we'd love to hear you know what what extra you want us to bring um next but for now jen thank you so much um thank you so much for your guidance today you're welcome thank you for listening all right Bye.